I had a lot of trauma in my life. I didn't want to face the world. Diane Vasic dealt with her trauma by taking prescription sedatives. Soon she became addicted. I couldn't afford, so I started selling drugs to support my habit. And I, yeah, I got caught. Instead of serving a full prison term, Diane was ordered by the court to go into a private rehab called the Healing House. Her strict bail conditions meant she had to stay in rehab for 12 months. It was a chance to get her life back on track. I thought this was going to, you know, be it. So, anyway, I wanted my recovery bad. Oh, I wanted it so bad. And I would do anything, you know, to, uh, to get better. The rehab program would cost 80% of her welfare payments, so Diane was driven straight to Centrelink to sign over authority of her account. But she can't read. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what I signed. She was shocked by the conditions at the rehab houses she was placed in. It was very dirty, smelly, had no lock on the front door, broken glass, um, cockroaches, uh, 50 cats. I didn't have hot water for a couple of months. 7.30 has spoken to other women who sought treatment at various healing house residences over the past few years. They all confirmed the filthy conditions. I was gobsmacked. It was disgusting. Cockroaches in the microwave. We weren't allowed to turn on the heaters because of the electricity, so it was freezing cold. There was animal faeces on the floor. The Healing House website touts a team of professional counsellors, but when Diane Vasic arrived, she only saw a couple of volunteers. There was no staff around, no staff whatsoever. Other Healing House clients reported similar experiences, saying counselling was only available sporadically. There's no staff, like, we're left alone. There was no rehabilitation. It was an absolute nightmare. I asked to go back to jail. That's how bad it was. The Healing House is a registered charity run by Meredith Raymond, a former sales rep who abused drugs and alcohol. You know, I used to like just drink boxes of like wine until I was absolutely sick and take any type of substance that I could take with it to wash it down. Meredith Raymond got off drugs and became a born-again Christian who hosted her own YouTube channel. She runs four rehab centres at rented houses across southwestern Sydney. The Holy Spirit of God, which is a gift from Jesus, is the only solution, is, is what every addict's looking for. To me, it didn't have nothing to do with, with God. We're in a rehab. We don't want to hear that. I'm for my recovery there. Belinda Moffat was also uncomfortable with the religious practices at the Healing House. Oh, I thought it was weird, but I just, yeah, I, like I just got to the rehab. I didn't know what to think. <laughs> I'm just taking the ghost, I'm getting all jacked up because it's... I like to be jacked up. The women claim Meredith Raymond tried to get them to pretend they were drunk or high on drugs. Feel good, you know. We got uh, given little crystals. She said that we could smoke them, smoke the crystal, like a crystal rock. Yeah, she said that she couldn't wait until we all felt the same and couldn't wait till we all got discipled into Christianity and um, uh, got drunk with her on the Holy Spirit. Down and don't go Belinda Moffat says that as part of their rehab, they were expected to watch a controversial American preacher on YouTube for hours at a time. I heard about you, whore of Babylon. 
Brandon Barthrop is a former drug addict who pretends to smoke invisible joints to get high on God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. I used to always say there's no way that these guys aren't high. <laughs> so, speaking in tongues is good for everyone. Former residents say Meredith Raymond would also speak to them in tongues and tell them they were worthless. It's like a cult. Like, we're the devils if we're not Christian. Well, she'd go, ha ha ha, shandara ki andara, ri andara shandara. Some of these women say they were reluctantly baptised in the bathtub at one of the healing houses. A lot of them were crying and upset. Um, one particular girl, she was crying that much because she didn't want, really she didn't want to be baptised. Diane Vasic claims she was eventually put in charge of dispensing medication to other residents at another healing house property. I gave out medication that some of the medication was my drug choice. So um, it was very hard. I, I'm surprised I didn't relapse. After seven months, she breached her bail conditions and fled. I remember her saying, oh, you're going, nothing but a gutter trash, you know? I'd rather be in jail than cop this. It's abuse, verbal abuse every day. Some of the women recorded Meredith shouting at them during their daily arguments. Seven thirty has spoken to ten other women who fled the healing house or have been kicked out. Hello, how are you? Good. Nice. A little bit stressed. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Belinda Moffat was ejected from the house last week. She claims Meredith Raymond told her she was no longer dealing with clients on methadone. She now risks being sent back to prison. What's going to happen next? Bail change. Jail. Like I came to rehab to get help, not to be abused and yelled and screamed at and treated like shit. <laughs> Meredith Raymond did not respond to written questions from 7.30, but we caught up with her outside one of her rehab centres. Why have you kicked out so many women from the healing house? Meredith, will you answer our questions? What qualifications do you have to run a rehab? Seven thirty has confirmed at least seven other residents and their advocates have complained about the healing house to New South Wales Corrective Services the State Healthcare Complaints Commission, the National Charities Register and to the Federal Government. The Women's Justice Network, which advocates for female prisoners, has also lodged complaints. We did a range of notifications. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a real outcome. Um, I don't think anybody's really, you know, investigated it. The drug and alcohol rehabilitation sector is unregulated. It means there's no actual requirement for certain standards or minimum qualifications for staff. And there's no oversight body that would actually come in and say, you can't operate or you have to meet these standards where you can open. You don't need that. Gino Vumbaka was the head of the National Drug and Alcohol Council for 14 years. He's appalled that courts continue to refer vulnerable women to the healing house. I think for any magistrate or judge to send a vulnerable person into that situation and to put them into that predicament where they have to choose to either continue to stay there or break the law if they want to leave, uh, that, you know, I, I can only say that's wrong. That, that is simply wrong. The New South Wales Attorney General and the state's Chief Magistrate both declined 7.30's request for an interview. Okay. 
As for Belinda Moffat, she says she'd rather go back to prison than face another stay at the healing house. That's the whole point why I did use drugs in the first place, is to block the pain and the feelings. And then being in that rehab has just brought it all back again. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.